All right. Let's get on the word tonight. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 9. Powerful. Acts chapter 9. This is your first test. Oh, she got it. Okay. Awesome. So he says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Everybody say, threats and what? And what? Murder. Threats. Say with me, threats and murder. Threats and murder. Say it again. Say the M U R D E R. Say it. Murder. Huh? Murder. From where I come from, we just say murder. Which sounds like M O T H E R, mother. Okay. That's why we speak better English than Americans. Then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Everybody said, the thief cometh. The thief cometh to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So Saul, what is Saul doing right here? He is killing, he is stealing, he is destroying. What is his destroying? What is his focus? The disciples of the Lord. So he took it to the next level and went to the religious system. The high priest. To legitimize, to endorse his act of terror against God's people. These are people who are supposed to love God, love the Lord. But they are standing in opposition against, against what? Standing against the against the purpose of God and against and against the disciples of, of Christ. Verse 2. What was the reason he went? Watch this now. Verse 2. He says, Give me verse 2. And as led us from the high priest now, from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, everybody say, I'm of the way. Whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So he went to the high priest to give him permission so that he can go arrest believers, Christians, the disciples of Jesus, you know, arrest them and bring them bound in chains to Jerusalem. I'm going somewhere with this. This is going to be good. Verse 3. And he journeyed, sorry, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Everybody say Damascus. Say it with me, Damascus. Damascus. And suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. I have to stand for this. <laughs> suddenly, a light shone around him. From heaven. Yeah. Everybody say the lights of God. The lights of God. That's our subject tonight. The lights of God. When the lights of God come, it interrupts, disrupts, interrupts, and disrupts everything that you are about. The light of God has no respect for any person. See, he went to the high priest and got authorization to legitimize his mission of terror against God's people. 
and they granted him that. So while he was about this whole process, you know, watch this now. He journeyed, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly a light shone, shone around him from heaven. Watch this now. Give me verse 4. Give me 4. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Go back to three. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. Now, we have to understand what Damascus means. Damascus is one of the most ancient, oldest cities. One of the places, one of the things that happened in Damascus was when as a matter of fact, Abraham had a servant, Eliezer, um, Eliezer from Damascus. Damascus was a city that is so popular, influential, prosperous. So much goes on in the city of Damascus. It's the city whereby you can easily buy slaves. You can easily do anything. It's, 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 it's a city filled with a whole lot of stuff, corruption, and a whole lot of things going on in Damascus. So, Paul, or Saul in this context, as a matter of fact, Saul, when he came closer to the city of sin, a city that has so much of uh, activities, so much of activities that doesn't really reflect the plan, the purpose of God, the things about God, you know, it's, 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 a, religious, it's, it's a religious city. It doesn't really reflect anything about the kingdom of God. He came close to that place. While he came close to that place, that's the place where the light of God came upon him. God will use the most insignificant place to manifest himself. Think about it. Think about some places you have been in your life where you least expected you will encounter God or you hear God or you feel God and God showed up in that situation or in that place. Think about it. The most remote places you see God pop up in those places, show up in those places, manifest himself in those places. Now watch this now. That's not even my point. I'm going somewhere with this. Let's see what happened. So he says, A light shone around him from heaven. This light is still shining from heaven. Amen. Everybody say with me, this light, this light is still shining from heaven. Oh, this is going to be good. This light is still shining from heaven. Say with me, this light, this light is still shining light. from heaven. There are three people in scripture that experience this light this way. The first person we see right here in this context is who? Paul. I mean Saul. The second person, I would like us to still stay on the book of um, um, Acts. Okay. Stephen. Everybody says Stephen. Stephen. 
Okay. Go to Acts 26. No, not Acts 26. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. And verse. The psalm. Um, Fifty-four. Acts seven fifty-four. All right. When they heard, this is Stephen now. Stephen was being persecuted. The, the disciples of Jesus were being persecuted, and Stephen was also being persecuted. Uh, was being killed. Watch this. So he gave a long sermon. This is part of the sermon. So. She says here, when they heard, when they heard that Stephen now, when they heard Stephen, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. That's against Stephen now. Please follow me. I'm building up something. I'm cooking something. 55. Go to 55. But he, that's Stephen now, all right? But he, being full of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Everybody say, full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. 56. And said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Hmm. Okay. Keep your finger there. Stay there for a minute. There is a, another part I want to show you. Okay. So we're in verse 56, right? So he says, Behold, I see. The heavens open. Everybody say open heavens. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then, then verse, give me 57. Go to 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. Verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was whose name was okay let me bring bring it home this is gonna be good so now first i had showed you how saul persecuting the christians killing the disciples of jesus he was on a mission to do the same when it got to Damascus, close to Damascus, as a matter of fact, this light shone from heaven, all right? And then he fell to the ground, and he heard the voice of Jesus, and Jesus told, said to him, why, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You're not just persecuting, you know, my apostles, my disciples, you're persecuting me, myself, all right? Now, Paul, I mean, Saul had that encounter, but Watch what happened first before he had that encounter. Saul was this very same guy who stood when Stephen was being stoned to death. That's what we see here. And they cast him out of the city, that's Stephen now, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. So, 
The same thing that happened to Stephen is now happening to Saul. In the sense that for Stephen, he saw heaven. He saw heaven. Stephen saw heaven. Go to verse 56. Back up to 56. And said, look, I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. If anyone ever doubt where Jesus is seated or his position in heaven, this is proof of where he is. Stephen says he is standing at the right hand of God. Now, the Bible says, the Bible tells us that he is seated. Christ is what? Seated at the right hand of God, right? That's what Paul would tell us. The same Paul, Paul tells us that Christ Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. And we are seated. We are actually seated with Christ in heavenly places, right? Now it says here, he is not sitting down. He is what? Standing. Follow me. When Stephen was being persecuted, Jesus stood up. Jesus, who was seated in heavenly places, when Stephen was being persecuted, he stood up. But what happened next? The heaven was open, and the Son of Man was seen standing at the right hand of God. What does it mean when Jesus stands? <laughs> what does it mean when Jesus stands? They have the things going on on the earth, everything going on on the earth caught heaven's attention. Everything going on on earth caught heaven's attention. Jesus stood up. Stephen saw Jesus standing up in heaven and is about to do something upon the face of the earth. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. There are many things that we are going through in life and we don't feel God in the midst of the times when we're going through this stuff it's like god is quiet god is silent god doesn't care god doesn't know me oh it's my sins oh it's something that i did wrong these that you focus on your sins you focus on the things in your life you focus on you're looking for something you're looking for a reason why you're not hearing God. You're not sensing God. You're not feeling God. You, 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 it's like God is distant. You're, you're looking for something to blame, to hold on to. But that is not the situation. That is not the situation. In the case of Stephen, when Stephen is being persecuted, he's not being killed. While he was being killed, he had access to heaven. What the enemy is using to destroy you, God is using to give you opening and access into heaven and to see God's position concerning your life while going through that situation. Now, watch this now. Someone is being stoned to death. He's being killed right there. He's being killed right there. But that's the moment when you read Acts chapter 7, Stephen preached a long sermon. He was full of the Holy Spirit and he was preaching a very long sermon. But while he was preaching the sermon, he did not see heaven opened. While he was preaching this long sermon, he didn't see the glory of God. He didn't see heaven open and seeing Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He didn't see that. It was not until he was being stoned to death, he saw heaven open and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. 
There are times in your life when everything, when you are executing what God wants you to execute, but you don't feel God. You don't sense God at that moment. You only now sense God in times of trouble, in times of persecution, in times when everything that you have been walking on or walking towards, or I mean, you start sensing God in times when you have fully obeyed God. You have fully obeyed God, but what is left now, it, there's nothing left for you to do after you've obeyed God. And it's like you've lo- you're losing everything, everything's getting over in your life. Then you see heaven opening up, then you begin to see the light of God opening up. You see, when it says the glory of God, when it says, look, I, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right, right hand of God. The previous verse says, talks about seeing he, he, uh, uh, Stephen seeing the glory of God. The glory of God also stands for the light of God. Just like Saul saw the light of God shine, shine upon him, run upon him, run, run on him, right just by Damascus. Same thing. Now, the reason I want to, I'm, the, the reason why I'm sharing this with us tonight is because of this. There is a light that is coming to us. There is a light that is coming to us. This light will come through trial. This light will come through persecution. This light will come through the darkest seasons and times of our lives. We'll begin to see this light shining in the darkest hours of our lives. Give me 55. Okay, that's where you are. Yeah, great, thanks. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. God is saying this is the season we need to gaze into the heavens. We gaze into one another. We gaze into men. We gaze into economy. We gaze into what the government is saying. We gaze into everything around us. We are not gazing to the right place. We are not looking at the right place. We're looking at... uh, Things on earth. We're looking at things on earth. God says it's time for us to shift our focus from the things on earth and shift and start gazing, looking up to the heavens. Looking up to the heavens so that we can see the glory of God. It is only when you start looking into the heavens, you will begin to see the glory of God. If you are looking at the situation you're going through, you will never see the glory of God. If you're looking at your pain, your disappointment, you're looking at your trials, you're looking at your tribulations, you will never see the glory of God. The only time you will see the glory of God is when you look up to the heavens. The book of Psalms says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who has made the heavens and the earth. Until you look up to the heavens, until you look up above to him, you can't see that help. You can't feel that help. Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. But even though he saw the glory of God, it did not stop the persecution. Mr. Benjamin, you feeling it? (laughs) Even when he saw the glory of God, it did not stop the people from killing him. Yeah, this is a hmm moment. Because the glory of God is not coming to, it's not, it's not an escape from your trial. The glory of God is for the glorification of God in your life. It's for God to take glory in your life through what you are going through or in what you're going through. 
one will think wow who he's seen the glory of god he's seen heaven he's seen the glory of god and guess what he's ever seen jesus standing about to fight his enemies right Oh, so all these people are soon going to be destroyed. All these my enemies are soon going to be destroyed. I'm sorry. He still died. They killed him. Never look for escape from the process of God in your life. Look for the glory of God in what you go through. See, we want escape. God says, I want my glory. You pray, Lord, take me out of this. Lord, take me out of this. Lord, take me out of this. God says, no, I want my glory. If I take you out of this, where is my glory? Where is your testimony? How will the world know that I'm your heavenly father? That I'm um, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Da, da. <laughs> You're singing on Sunday, you, 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 Paulette. <laughs> How would they know? How would they know? Then Paul. Let's back up to Acts chapter 9. Saul. I keep saying Paul. Same thing though. Not yet. You alright? Acts chapter 9. Where is this? Verse 4. Verse 4. Then, this is Saul now. Watch this. Then he fell to the ground. When this light shone upon Saul, he fell to the ground this light will bring you down this light this light will humble you he fe- this is a guy who was well renowned who was well who has the, this reputation who was highly respected in the Jewish community he was so respected he was a scholar he was a he was a he was a scholar in Judaism he knew the law and based on the knowledge he had of the law he was persecuting Christians because they didn't believe the Jews didn't believe in Jesus Till date, till now, they don't. They don't see him as Savior, Messiah. They don't believe all that. They still hold on to the law of Moses. He fell to the ground. This light will bring you back to the ground. It will stop. It will interrupt everything you have known. Everything you've been doing. Everything you perceive is the, is the right thing to do. Paul knew he was doing the right thing. But when this light came, it disrupted that. Everybody say, Lord, I need your light. We need the light of God to disrupt the things we are doing. Many of us don't have light. That's why we struggle. That's why we are at the same place. Things are not moving. Things are not happening. There's there's this, the light of God is not showing forth. Depression, feeling sad, all of that. The light of God is absent. The light of God is absent. Got a text message from a young lady. She said, How did I get here? I'm 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 frustrated. I 
I hate my life. I have nothing going on for me. Prophet, show me the way. What is going on with me? I'm not happy. I'm sad. I, I feel like dying. And I said, you have no light. You have no light. I was actually sharing this with her. I said, you have no light. When this light come, it will change the course of life. He fell to the ground. But God didn't leave him on the ground. He heard the voice of God. When this light comes, it will cause you to... It's like you're losing everything. It's like everything will be disrupted. They, these, are, these are God's holy disruptions. God will disrupt everything about your life. Disrupt your family. Disrupt your health. Disrupt your, your business. Disrupt your career. Disrupt everything you, you have. Disrupt everything. Everything will be disrupted. But he doesn't leave it disrupted. He lifts it. I mean, he comes in, he, he disrupts it, and then he begins to speak to you to give you direction. He says to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? This very question is all Saul needed to hear to step to the next level. Sometimes this voice, when this voice comes to you, it comes with a question. It doesn't come with an answer. It comes with a question. For Jeremiah, God said to Jeremiah, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? For Elijah running away from Jezebel, he went on to hide somewhere, some under some cave. <laughs> A prophet hiding in cave. Huh? hiding in cave. Imagine you go see me hiding in one small cave. God came to him and said, what are you doing here? He said, ah, they've killed all the prophets. I'm the only one left. He said, who told you that? There are 450 prophets or, or more. There are, no, 750 prophets or more that, has, that have no bowed to Jezebel. Come get, get, get your bowed from this place. I'm the only one. You put too much, you look too much on yourself. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? God will ask you a question. He won't give you an answer. But the question is your answer. Amen. God said to him, Paul, I mean Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? Why are you doing it? Give me the next verse. Verse 5. And he said, who are you? Lord, no relationship. He didn't know him. He heard his voice. Who? Huh? Who? Who? Huh. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who are you? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. Whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. Jesus said to him, You don't know what you're doing. You can't break me. You can't kill me. You can't destroy me. This movement is too powerful. You can't kill it. You have to join it. trying to destroy what you can't destroy. Just join it. You can't overcome it. You can't destroy it. You can't kill it. Join it. If you can't beat them, join them. Join them. Watch this. There's somewhere I'm going. Give me six. Give me six. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do now? Okay, now. Okay, okay. All right. What now? What do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city and you will, you will be told what you must do. Why don't you just tell me? <laughs> Man, you got 
brought me here first it was the light and i'm hearing your voice now now you, you're telling me I, I should start going i can't even see but you want me to go into the city how do i go to the city you just call you just you just you just blinded my eyes you blinded my eyes you blinded my sight and you still expect you expect me to go to the city how do i go to the city with eyes closed and with this blindness arise and go into the city your location will begin to change God will begin to give you a new location. A new location. As this light comes, this light will bring you to a new location. It will bring you to a new people. It will connect you with the right people that God has predicted, I mean predetermined to connect with you. Go to the city. Everybody say go to the city. And this is when you go to the city, you will be told what to do. You will be told what to do. God will say, God is saying, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I will put my word, I will put the word for your next season in somebody and he will tell you what to do. So there is a divine connection that is coming because you have heard my voice and because this light has come to you. So this light will culminate in divine connections. The outcome of this light coming into your life is that there will be divine connections. Something you'll be praying about. Something you'll be wanting to do. Something you'll be wanting to have. Something you'll be able, I mean you've been praying to get. Something you've been, you've been trying to achieve. All you need is this light of God coming into the atmosphere of your life and changing everything. Changing the way you think. Showing you where to go. Showing you how to go. And bringing you culminating in bringing you to divine to divine connections divine connections divine connections is coming to us i said divine connections is coming to us something you've been praying about something something you've been trusting god about some things that you are not even qualified for divine connection is coming to you to step into that place this is happening because of the light of god that is coming to your dwelling place somebody say i receive it tonight These people will be equipped to tell you what to do. Yes. But they are God sent. They are God positioned. They are God positioned. God positioned. God positioned. God positioned. You've been trying to birth that dream. You've been trying to do that thing. You've been trying to do that business. You've been trying to establish that thing. And you've been struggling. This is the season that the light of God is going to come to you. And you will have divine connections. And you will be told what you should do. Amen. That's how you're going to step into the next level. God will bring you into connection with people with people that are connected with people that have the answer answer they have the answer to what you've been trying to achieve trying to do it begins with what the light of god the light of god the light of god now go to verse seven let me see if i can and the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. They heard the voice, but they saw no one. The worst mistake you can ever do is try to explain your personal encounter with God, with men. They were so close, they heard it, but they didn't see it. Why? Because it's not meant for them to see but you, are, you want to show them. You want to tell them everything. It's not everything you tell. Amen. Amen. So, eight. Then Saul arose from the ground. And when he, his eyes were open, he saw no one. How can your eyes be open, but you see no one? His eyes are open, but he sees no one. Mm. 
Then Saul arose from the ground. And when his eyes were open, he saw no one. He saw no one. No one. No one. No one. He saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. This is the same guy going to Damascus, going to the city to arrest Christians. Now they are leading him. If I was part, if I lived in that day, I would look for him and smack his face. <laughs> I was a stupid man. <laughs> Give me verse 9. <laughs> and he went three days without what? Sight. Everybody said reset. God was resetting his mind. That's why when God is resetting your mind, everything looks blind to you. Nothing is making sense. You're trying to make sense of situations in your life. They're not making sense. What is going on here? You're trying so hard. That's your season of blindness. It has a beginning. It has an end. But the enemy will tell you it has no end. It has a beginning. It has an end. Three days for Paul. The Bible says he neither ate nor drank. Give me verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. This man was a very righteous guy. Not the one with his wife that went to steal money from, from the church. Ananias and Sapphira. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am Lord. God was already speaking to Ananias about Saul. Give me verse 11. Next. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called what? Straight. And inquire at the house of who? Judas. For one called, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. <laughs> this is where I'm going. Everybody say, For he is praying. He is what? Praying. He is what? When is he praying? When he was blind. Three days blind, no food, no water. Now he turned into a fast, like a fast. But he was praying. That's where we miss it. Instead of praying, we're going everywhere looking for how this whole thing will be worked out, resolved, going all over the place. Paul was praying. And you wonder why Paul was the greatest apostle in the, in the, in the, in the New Testament? Because of these acts, these things. Those, that three days, God was resetting his mind, resetting his understanding. In the season when God is resetting your understanding, when you don't understand what is going on, when everything looks blink, I mean bleak, everything looks bleak, everything is just, you, 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 you can't tell, you don't know what is going on, you are very much confused. Pray. Pray. I'm not saying talking about prayer. I'm talking about praying. Because sometimes say, I'm praying. No, you're not. You're talking about prayer. I'm saying pray. We don't pray. Many of us don't pray. Many of us don't pray. For real. It's by I come to that conclusion based on what I see. We don't pray. We think we pray, but we don't pray. Because there are certain things when you are praying, when you pray, when you are a prayerful person, the way you talk, I will see it. The way you talk, I will see it. When you are a prayerful person, you walk in the spirit. You don't mind the things of the flesh. You don't mind the things around. You, you, very, you, you, you have control. You have confidence. You have control. You don't just cast restraint like that. You have control over situation because you pray. Because prayer equips you. It gives you. It gives you an edge over things. Yes. 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 I went to the doctor the other day, about two days ago. So the doctor came into the room, checked me, and all of that. He said, "You are a mystery." A doctor, and that doctor, he's not. He's not from America. He's not from here. I think it's from somewhere in the Middle East, maybe Pakistan, Indian, or somewhere. So I know this guy. I don't think he's a Christian. I don't think so. Because when I told him who I am, you know, 
there's a way there's a way he would have re responded knowing that i'm a pastor there's a way he would have responded i would know he's a believer but the way he responded i knew he's not a believer so but before i even told him who i who i was he said you are a mystery i kid you not that's what he said i said why do you say that he said no he said there's just something about you i said do you see people like me all the time like that do you tell that to many people he said no he said i've never said that to anybody he said you are a mystery When you are a praying person and you walk with God closely, there's something about you that is a mystery to people. And people who walk in the flesh, they will, they will misinterpret that as something negative. But those who walk in the spirit, they will understand, they will understand better and they'll see it better. Yes. Yes. Prayer is key. In in, 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 in transitioning in transitioning to the next place in God in moving to the next place in God wherever God wants to take you prayer is what will help you get to that place yes grace is there but prayer is what it helps it helps navigates you through the seasons of your life to step into that place but guess what we do more we talk more than pray we talk more than pray have you asked yourself why is it easy for me to be on the phone for one hour but i can't spend one hour in prayer ask yourself why it's because instead of you the longing for the things of the spirit is not as strong as your natural self so the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. Everybody say, The street called Straight. The street called what? Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. Are you ready for this revelation? You ready for this thing I'm about to say? Everybody say, Straight. That word straight means righteous. You know what? You know what made that street righteous? You know what made that whole street righteous? It is the prayer of Saul that made that street straight or righteous when you pray that whole atmosphere becomes righteous remember the other sunday was it last sunday or the other sunday i said to you how when 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 moses heard the voice of god in the wilderness god said to him the place where you stand is what a holy ground because of the voice of god that came to him at that place same thing where saul was praying that whole street that whole street was called straight because a, a man that God has appointed, has, that has, has appointed uh, and set apart unto himself. A man who is pray, has his prayer has sanitized, has made righteous a street in Damascus. Your prayer will drive those demons away in that street. Years ago, I was, when I was still in Bible school, I, 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 I would go to school, I will go to Bible school those days, sometimes I will walk long distance, you know, probably about, about an hour to go to college. I didn't have a car at that time. Then after a while, I think my second year, I had a car. So sometimes I'll walk like that. Sometimes I just want to walk and sometimes I don't even have money for transport. I'll just keep walking and I'll be praying in the spirit as I'm going. As I'm going. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. So one day I had prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for hours. Then they had this, uh, this uh, they had cassettes. Huh? You know, cassette 90 minutes, right? A side A, side B, right? Side A, side B. Dominic was not born that time. <laughs> so, so side, side A, we play um, uh, 45 minutes, right? Side B, we play 45 minutes. Then you know it's what? 90 minutes. So what I do, I put, I put it on. Okay. I put it on. When I put it on, it will play 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes, I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. 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 Then I turn it again. 45 minutes again, I'm praying. So that's how I calculated how long I pray. So sometimes I'll pray a whole six hours non-stop. 
I mean non-stop. My whole jaw, every part becomes something I can't even explain. I was so skinny. I'll show you some of those photos. Skinny like a, 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 a straw. So one day I prayed and prayed and prayed and I was coming from a Bible school. So I was going to school that morning. Very early in the morning. And on my street, about two, three houses from my street where I was staying, uh, there was this girl who was demon possessed. Early in the morning, this girl would be doing all kinds of things outside, you know. They, the family, they couldn't, they couldn't contain her. She was so violent, you know. They couldn't control her, you know. So I came out, and as I was walking, I, was, I, was, I had prayed all night. Prayed filled with the Holy Spirit. I was on fire. So as I was walking, walking, remember, I walked that past that road almost every, I mean, every day. That's my street. So as I came close, I, this girl saw me. This little girl, when she saw me, she started screaming. Ah! Ah! She started, I was saying, I, I didn't know it was me. I didn't know. I thought maybe something was going on inside. So, I, me being curious, I was like, let me see. Well, as I was, as, as I kept getting closer, ah, then she said, "Go away from me! Go away from me!" In in a language, not in English. Go away from me! Go away from me! Ah, like the light, the light, the light, the light. Go away from me! Okay. Then I adjusted myself and I started going my way to school. I said, wow. So me too, I have this light. When you pray, there's something that you carry which everybody don't. There's something that you carry that everybody don't. As a matter of fact, like we see here, that atmosphere where you pray, it becomes an atmosphere of God's righteous power, God's righteous rule, God's judgment, the anointing of the Spirit. I mean, the anointing, of, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It flows in that atmosphere. One thing prophetess would do when, when, when <laughs> this is funny though. She will. <laughs> It's nonsense, but it's not nonsense. So watch this now. We have some uh, on YouTube. We have like John Eckhart prayers. Prayers that rout demons. Powerful prayers. Prayers that rout demons. So if we are going to church sometimes, she put it on. Prayers that rout demons. And it's warfare prayers. So when we get home after church, maybe Sunday or um, you know of Thursday when we get home and if the service was powerful you say she would say you see it's that thing that I put so it cleans the house all the demons so the anointing was flowing in the church so it was like <laughs> but those prayers are powerful when you leave your houses leave something on especially if you live alone or if you have your room to yourself or whatever you know leave it on let it just keep play, playing at the background. Because I tell you what, there are spirits everywhere in the atmosphere. You have to sanitize, purify the atmosphere around you, in your car, in your houses, everywhere. Create an atmosphere for the Spirit of God to rest. Let me conclude with this. The Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street, call straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Tarsus for behold he is praying can God say that about you that you are praying that means to say God saw this man's prayer God saw him in prayer God want to see us in prayer position in prayer see this next season we can only survive this next season by prayer fasting when was the last time you fasted i haven't either yeah me too i haven't i haven't fasted i don't think i've fasted this year yes i haven't she's my witness did you fast this year 
when did you fast? When did you fast? And he said, lie, I'm joking. It's not you. She's saying the truth. It's true if she said she did. Amen. But I haven't fasted. He said, Apostle, why, you, why didn't you fast? I didn't fast because I feel I need to be driven into fasting. I've skipped many meals, but it wasn't fasting. Because my concept, I, I've done fasting in my life. 30 days, 40 days fasting. I've fasted and fasted and fasted in my life. I've really, oh yeah, with water. I'm not saying with uh, cantaloupe. I'm not saying with oranges, uh, mangoes, cantaloupe. Is it cantaloupe you call it, right? No. Or with uh, grits. No food, only water. I've done it several, oh, three days, many times. What happens with what has happened over the years is that I have accumulated miles in the spirit. You can accumulate miles in the spirit. And then in the latter part, in the latter part of your life, you start entering into the reserves you have created years before. That's the season I'm in. What I used to pray six hours to see a manifestation. I pray one hour, I see manifestation. You know why? I have accumulated years. Years. Righteous work with God. Abstaining from every kind of stuff. Things, flesh, stuff. Abstain from all of that. You've built up your spirit man. Now you are right there. You are floating. So what I could pray in the past, I'll pray six hours to get a little result. But now I pray just an hour. It's short 30 minutes. It's short 15 minutes. I get the result, if not even greater than what I, had, I would have prayed six hours in the past to see, to manifest. I remember when we had our first healing waves in uh, 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 Sicilia. So her friend, the pastor, told her and said, said to her, tell your husband, tell him to fast and pray because there will be deliverance that will be happening there. There will be deliverance taking place there. Demons coming out and, you know, he needs to minister to people who have demons and all of that. So she told me that and I said, fast to cast out demons why so if i'm in the flight i'm traveling from from new york to uh, france and i'm in the flight someone is demon possessed in the flight i'll have to quickly i'll tell the pilot get down i need to go home and fast to come and cast out this spirit i said to her i don't need to fast she said, you sure I said, I said, just watch what's going to happen. We went for that. When we've been doing, we did those meetings there. I never fasted one day. I just do my usual worship, prayer, prepare the word. That's it. I go in there. The power of God moves. Healing, prophecy, things manifest. Why? Because you've accumulated years of working with God. You've built things with God with God in the spirit. Amen. And you are still maintaining that. Amen. You're building on that. You're working with that. You're working with that. And there will be manifestations. Prayer builds up your spirit man. If you are depressed, prayer breaks that spirit of depression. If you are in a situation where you don't understand, just go into prayer. Worship. Pray. Get off the phone. Get off the phone. Turn the TV off. You will get nothing from there. Go in prayer. There's no substitute for prayer. He prayed. While his eyes were blind, he kept on praying. He didn't go from doctor to doctor trying to get his eyes to open. He went to pray. He pray. Who told him to do that? Nobody. He just got into prayer. Prayer shifts everything. Amen? Prayer shifts everything. God says tonight, my light is coming to you. My light is coming to you. Stand to your feet and say, Lord, I'm receiving your light tonight. 
Lord, I'm receiving your light tonight. Lord, I'm receiving your light. This is a season of your light in my life. Lord, I open up my spirit for your light to flood my spirit. I open up my spirit for your light to flood my life. Open up, Lord, my inner man. I give it to you, Lord. Flood my soul. Flood my spirit with your light. Flood my spirit. Flood my soul with your light, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The light of God. The light of God. May you have this light. Whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, may the light of God come to you. May the light of God come to you at this hour, at this time, giving you direction, repositioning you, helping you advance in the purposes of God, build you up, equip you, give you power over the enemy, give you aid over the enemy, give you victory over the enemy. So this is also one thing that happened. The third person who shone, who experienced this light was Jesus. Bible says he took Jesus, took Peter and John high up. How many of his disciples? Peter, Peter, James, and John, right? Three of his disciples, right? Yes. Took them up to the mount of the mount that was later called Transfiguration. And the Bible says that Jesus shone, it was all covered with the same light. These are three men in scriptures that experienced the supernatural light of God. The Bible says he heard the conversation between. Uh, the disciples heard the conversation between Jesus Elijah and Moses they came you want to experience the supernatural the light of God will, will open up the heavens the light of God will open up things in the heaven you will see God you will manifest, he will manifest himself in you and through you there are many of you that God is saying tonight I want to use you I want to use you for great things. I want to equip you. I want to use you. But it will begin with the light of God. Some of you, your spouses, the power of God is going to come upon your spouses and they will get it, that touch of God and they will begin to walk in this light of God. Some of you, your children, are going to experience this light of God. If you want God to touch your children with this light or your spouses with this light, come forward here. Let me pray with you.